And we are live. Uh, welcome to Paladins Pajamas. I'm Scott. I will be the DM. Uh, this is going to be the first episode we uh, upload to YouTube. So I'll go ahead and have everybody introduce themselves and their character. Um, and we are currently missing two people. We are missing Chester, who is currently playing the Asimar Hexblade uh, Nox. And we are missing... My brother Tucker, who is playing Marlo Mavakias, a bard monk human. Becca? Okay, hi, I'm Becca. I'm playing Mist, who used to be a tabaxi, but is now some sort of weird squirrel snake hybrid creature, a uh, druid. Have a little pet that looks like a snake squirrel itself, with little floating moats about it. And I'm on trial. <laughs> uh, Chris? <clears throat> yes, I'm uh, playing a character called uh, Rinmei, who's a tiefling artificer who just joined the party for who knows what reason she doesn't really understand yet. Shayna? I'm Shayna. I play Dahlia, a uh, halfling rogue who is going to be taking, I believe, a bit of a back seat today. Uh, Terry? Hi, I'm Terry. I'm playing Anis as Fulma. I'm a dark elf sorcerer who becomes a cleric. Um, I'm a little connected to uh, what some people would call, consider a god. Uh, feel free to watch the episodes and you'll find out why. <laughs> and finally, James. Hi, I'm James. I play Thaven Zilliosiant, Elvin Abjur Extraordinaire, though I'm told that today I'll be playing a lawyer. Oh, yeah. I'll be a lawyer as well. I'm Lady Fee, hence the horns. All right, we'll get to that really in just this. a second. So we'll go ahead and start. Uh, when last we left you guys, Mist was being led off in chains. Uh, Mist, as soon as those chains clasp on, by the way, you suddenly feel as though there's a drain of your system, as though, like, the things that connect you to the natural world, and it's in here, Mechanis, it's uncomfortable for you, anyways, because everything is manufactured and gear like. But um, all that connective energy just like fades out of you. You don't think you can wild shape, you don't think you can cast spells. Um, yeah, this sucks. <clears throat> Does not feel good. No. Uh, Frost, stay with Dahlia and Toast. Uh, both uh, Frost and Toast, by the way, are looking at your um, manacles hungrily. They want a snack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you get your your let off. Uh, Mist, you're immediately put into a what is essentially a holding cell. Uh, they they let you. They let you know, uh, we can't, we contacted your patron. He is, or it is providing you a, it is providing you counsel. We are a fair organization here. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> uh, when will I get to meet my counsel? Uh, she just arrived. At which point you see a beautiful, uh, she looks like a tiefling only with actual wings, uh, dark, dark hair, a, uh, basically a business suit, cut a little low for, like, propriety, but, um, skirt uh, just a little high above the knee for business attire, um, walks with perfect grace, uh, probably one of, if not the most beautiful women you've ever seen in your life, um, and she introduces herself as Archduke Fierna. And oh, you're Rendell's patron. Am I? Yes. Yes, I am. So what did the dreamer offer you for you to be my counsel? I thought you'd be pretty pissed at me. Uh, Actually, he, he, uh, the, your current payment is uh, Rendell's soul back. This this works out quite well, actually, despite my upset with you killing my patron. Working for you will allow me to get his soul back. Oh, well, 
That's excellent. I know Rendell would have much preferred to be with you and finish his contract. Understandably. I, I hope you realize the only reason I had to kill him is because whatever the Raven Queen did to him, he had lost all interest in what he cared about before, including the things that he had been originally trying to do for you. It was a difficult situation. I understand your motives, even if I don't agree with the execution. Pun intended. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you for representing me. Uh, what would you like to know before we head into the courtroom? I want to say we should start at the beginning. Okay. Well, the beginning of this whole courtroom thing happened at the City of Brass. Um, one of Rendell's books was in Sandeep's library. Uh, Rendell took it back and put it in my bag of holding. And as far as I know, that's what I am. this case is about. Uh, so, I mean, we didn't... Rendell said he didn't steal it. He was just retrieving his property that Sandy took. Um, so, Fierna, you know, so uh, the original, um, the original accusations was the theft of a ancient tome and the theft of the uh, Elysian shear. The, okay. The uh, and just recently they added a charge of. They, well, actually, they added two charges. Uh, one of inadvertent genocide and one of releasing a, of basically a prison break of a sealed god. Or aiding and abetting a sealed god in the uh, destruction of their prison. Uh, <clears throat> of course. Okay. So... What you're referencing is that first book. Yes. So you don't know. Okay. Yep. You're aware there are a total of four charges. Uh, your... Four charges? No, I am not aware of that. The ancient tome was number one. After that, you are charged with aiding Rindle for his theft of the Elysian shear or spear? Shear. Sure. Uh, we never had the Elysium Shear, though. Sithark took that out of Sand Deeps and ran away. That's actually why we came here to Mechanus, is we're trying to track down the Elysium Shear. Uh, Rindle is also being charged with... <laughs> Rindle isn't being charged with anything. Mist is no, being charged. Not... Oh, Mist is. I thought... Oh, no, okay. no, 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 no. Rindle's, um, R Rindle's crimes were abetted by when he got soul scoured. They are... Oh, that's convenient. Yeah. Okay. The only ones that are actually being charged, and that you would know this, the only ones that actually currently being charged is missed. The, there are wanted, like, wanted poster, uh, um, charges out for Full Moon, Melee, and Marlowe because they were there. <laughs> Damn it, you guys. <laughs> okay. See, I'm finally learning the actual backstory of all this. Okay. What was Oh, the and then also a gnome by the name of Rock Bottom. Oh, right. Rock Bottom. Okay. Well, we'll get to uh, that. He's not charged with the genocide or the god thing. Right. He's just related. I need to ask about him. Yeah. Um, what about, do you know anything why you may be charged with inadvertent genocide? Uh, yes. So... The dreamer, my patron, was slowly waking up, and uh, when Neely uh, was taken over by Primus, uh, she attacked the dreamer, waking it up. Um, Fee, you would already know that, like, this is not what they're talking about. Um, okay. Because the timeline is different. This happened months ago. Like, look, um... It, oh, there's a reference like... about lycanthropy in there. <laughs> I understand that you guys get up to quite a bit of what I would call mischief, but that isn't the instance of genocide I'm speaking of. Okay. There's something you... a little earlier than that involving pack of lycanthropes. Oh. 
Oh, that. Yeah, um, so that, that's a little hard to explain because I'm going to have to go back even a little further back to the abyss for, for that to make sense. Um, at which well, point, Fee, you probably should like, I would say you'd be like, why don't we start at the very beginning of, Yeah. how did you all meet each other? Okay, well, from the very, very beginning, uh, I was working on board the Crimson <clears throat> Zephyr uh, as apprentice to the Bosun, and we were coming into Kokarn's Rest. Marlo and Full Moon were both passengers on board, as well as Rock Bottom. And uh, so that's kind of how we met. Uh, getting into Kukulkarn's Rest, we... Well, I was getting ready to continue exploring and learning more about the world around me. So I <clears throat> said goodbye to Captain Molly and Bozen. And we went to the Copper Coral and kind of had some food. We were looking for some jobs. There was a nice uh, poster of various things going on that we might be able to look into. And Rock Bottom decided to blow up and attack Arena, the uh, bard who was at the Copper Coral, Penny nearly killed him. He got 86 from the Copper Coral forever. At which point, let's switch back to the party who just uh, missed <laughs> disappear or get let off. At which point, the uh, um. A, uh, and actually, we'll go with a detective instead of a lawyer for James here. Um, a rather surly-looking uh, Modron, I guess. Like, it's weird to see a surly Modron uh, kind of walk up and uh, introduce himself as number 7431 and, uh, and is here to collect all of your statements um so james you want to take over and start asking marlo and full moon questions to get their full statement sure uh quick question though what am i trying to figure out you uh accidental genocide theft of magical tomes and in a, in of inadvertent, a inadvertent genocide so so let me <laughs> rank these in order of severity now. from least severe to most severe least uh, severe accidental genocide um then the tome then the sword and then the releasing of the god um so but in terms of the order they happened and like it would be in chronological order it would be uh, theft of it would actually be the genocide, the tome, sort of actually same order. Weirdly, <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh, so it, it's kind of up to you how you want to ascertain that. But also, this is your opportunity to kind of figure out what happened with with the entire Paladin's Pajamas game. For our viewers, James is our newest player in this game. And I've asked no questions. <laughs> That's how you keep friends. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the Modron would know that the, uh, just because of how Mechanus is constructed, the people earliest in the party that are still here are going to be Full Moon for Marlo. All right. Go up to the group tip my trilby or whatever t standard detective hat but modron shaped yeah <laughs> okay dodecahedron with legs and a freaking sherlock holmes cap i've been uh, assigned to look in to investigate for the prosecution how long would you guys say you've known mist I'm gonna do my best, Tucker. Oh, my, I, 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 we've known Mist for a year now. I think, Full Moon, year, one year. Well, there. 
I mean, I don't have a very good uh, way of keeping time nowadays. <clears throat> it seems like a lot longer, though, you know, going to places like Ubis and other places. Yeah, that was a weird experience. Do you think we should go back there sometime? That was a... It, it was sometimes a little fun there. No, I don't think we have time. <laughs> All right. Well, as you are aware, she's on trial for some fairly heinous crimes that you might have been party to, might have witnessed. Crimes? What crimes? Did she? Can you be more specific? Um, yeah, we, we get up to a lot. Pulls out a little notebook, starts flipping through it. Let's see here. Accidental genocide. Theft of various magical items. I don't know anything about an accidental genocide. What do you mean by that? I'm just, I don't know anything about an accidental genocide. Hmm. And you? Uh, I would say that I, for a lot of the questions that I might be a little hazy, I need to speak to my spiritual advisor, um, Mealy. Right now, she's currently indisposed and she has a sword, uh, so I'm looking for her. So if you want to actually get her in here, she might actually be able to help us a little bit more with the questions. Her memory is way better than mine is. Uh, so the Mo Mojan 7431, uh, you have, they have dispatched people to summon her. None of them have ever returned. And it's only been like an hour and a half. Hmm. We're still looking for her. Have, do you know of her current whereabouts? Uh, no, I did. I should be here. Hmm. Anyway, I believe the, what she's mostly here for is the accidental release of a god of slaughter or the like. Oh, that just happened. Yeah, I don't think Mist had anything to do with it. I think yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the dwarves' fault. Like, both of them. Can you describe the events leading up to the release of the god? Well, we were in this cave that, like, kept on teleporting people around. Um, and then... You asked Rumi. She's, uh, she's the one that made the dungeon that we got stuck in. And I think she's the might be the cause of possible helping us with the god thing. So if you want to ask more about the layout, I believe she's the one who created it. Hmm. I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of drawing a blank as what to ask. I okay, we'll switch back to Mist and, <laughs> and B. We, left, we last left you guys explaining the incident at the Copper Coral. Yep. Which was yes. the first session of the game. Uh, the last thing you were saying was that Rock Bottom attacked... Arena the Bard and got 86 permanently from the copper coral. Coral, thank you. Um, yeah, I never did get him to explain why he attacked her, but after that, we ended up talking to the guard captain and taking up a job to deal with some orcs and possible possibly some lycanthrope attacks on settlers in the area. I needed to talk to Linus the Druid before heading anywhere else, which seemed to work out because Full Moon was trying to find the children that Linus was responsible for for some reason. Still never knew why that was going on. Anyhow, <clears throat> I checked in with Lioness so she so that she knew I was in the area and wasn't stepping on her territory type thing. We investigated the orcs, and it turned out they were totally misread the situation. They were trying to close a rift that demons were coming through. We thought they were trying to open the rift. The, the orcs were mercenaries. The hobgoblins were the ones trying to close the rift, rift right. FYI. Uh, yeah, they, so there were hobgoblins that were actually doing that. The orcs were kind of like hired by them. And we found out someone by the name of... What was her name? Hmm. Why am I blanking on it? Diana. Thank you. Diana was uh, purposefully opening these rifts to let demons in. Who uh, was Diana? She was this crazy 
crazy magic user who had a undead 14 year old badass paladin nearly kill me that's he was a vampire um <clears throat> that's its that's its whole own story but they are actually kind of important for how the whole abyss thing happened uh we looked into the lycanthropes and um rock bottom unfortunately got infected with being a werebore and it seems no he like was actually well technically he would have been age 19 but he looked like a 14 year old yeah mist thought he was 14 um so we looked into the lycanthrope things uh found the buried temple to the dreamer um full moon got infected infected himself with lycanthropy and i met toby who at the time was trapped in a chain um i don't remember uh, there's a few things in between that and us going after Diana that I don't quite remember. Uh, but we went after Diana trying to find, oh, that's right. Lioness had disappeared with the kids after a lycanthropes had attacked her home. And so we were trying to find some way to get to her because she wasn't on the material plane anymore, which is why we went to Diana because she supposedly had a artifact that could open up portals which they did, it was a sword that opened up a rift to the abyss. And um, my party decided to jump through the portal that the undead person opened. Yeah, and I followed them. So yeah, the abyss, that, that was interesting. Uh, the chaos. In, in the abyss started causing Toby and myself to join and I was convinced at the time that my entire party was being affected so I didn't trust any of them so didn't tell them that I was getting changed and we ended up at Gehenna and by the way Hard Rock of the Abyss awesome awesome restaurant totally recommend going there so if you have a chance but the things while we were there um we got the attention of gratz and rendell decided to well you i believe you know rendell did actually offer the carriage to you because gratz was trying to give the carriage to you and you turned him down because you're an intelligent smart woman and gratz is a bit creepy yeah and so Rendell kept Gretz's carriage. I will interject around this time, Fee, because you would have your own notes. Uh, you know that she skipped over one important thing, and that's uh, when she met Mealy. Mealy would have um, been with them at this point. As we diverge to talk a little bit about the carriage and creepy grass, I'll ask. When did you, when did Mealy factor into all of this? Oh, we met Mealy upon coming back to Kokarin's Rest before going after Diana. Um, right? And, uh, let's see, that was after the Lycanthropes. We went back to Kokarin's Rest and met Mealy. And so she came with us when we were going after Diana. We're still kind of getting to know each other during that time frame. She was a cleric of the... Uh, mother of spiders so i did give her the necklace of the mother of spiders that i found at lioness's place so she could commune with her god a little bit more directly um yeah so where were we uh after that we were talking about the carriage that grass offered and we all rejected but rindle kept Right, so uh, Rendell was able with the carriage to take us back to the material plane, which, uh, by the way, the carriage, not 100% safe. If you sit on the back, you might have to deal with undead spirits, which I got infected with uh, rock bottom soul at that point. Um, before we left the abyss, he had managed to take over my body and um so the rest of the party was finally able to clue me in that that was happening 
So when you we were unaware, I was unaware. I was, I woke up with like blood in my mouth one day and I, while we were there and I wasn't sure what was going on. So we got back to the material plane and were able to deal with Diana and her, I think his name was Eric, the vampire. At which point Rendell took possession of the abyssal shear. And I requested Marlo look over me while I prayed to the dreamer to try to get rock bottom um, released from me. And that's when I kind of went into this cocoon thing as Marlo was protecting me overnight and Toby and I finished joining and rock bottom was separated from me and became this little moat as well as there was this pig fetal pig thing that was there and plus my my two egg the two eggs that w were uh, adorable little frost and her sister initially um so come it come out of my cocoon in my new form protect the eggs and we needed to figure out what to do with the fetal pig Mealy took possession of the moat because i i was afraid it was going to try to trap me again and um so the fetal pig i knew it was important and i knew it had something to do with rock bottom and what had happened to him so i asked for help from the party and rendell said he could handle it and he cut it with the abyssal shear and uh, that was the end of the pig which i then believe full moon made jerky out of if i remember right because our little goblin friend um don Lon was still with us and so assisted in making some pig jerky And just to make things easy, I'm also saying the Modron uh, 7341 is probably getting all this information from Full Moon and Marlo at the same time in their own like weird way. So if you ever if if you guys if you ever want to ask them clarification questions, James, you're more than welcome to. Got it. I need to grab some coffee, so this would be a great opportunity to switch back to James and Ray May. Marlo, since you just joined us, um, you're being interviewed by a. Sherlock Holmes looking mo oh. Okay, Tucker is super broken up. I'm not even seeing or hearing him. Same. Okay, uh so uh Yeah, well it is a recap episode. <laughs> um Yeah. Right up recap episode. Um so the uh abyssal shear uh so you're looking for the Elysium Shear. The Elysium Shear happened, um, will happen later. The Abyssal Shear is its pair. There's a whole thing if the two two weapons get united and becomes like a apocalyptic weapon. Um, but the uh, that's actually what you're looking for uh, is the Elysium Shear. Melee has the Abyssal Shear. Right now. Got it. But the one they just mentioned was the Abyssal Shear. Which was the one that they were... S the stolen one was the Elysium Shear? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Full Moon. <clears throat> were you present for the stealing of the Elysium Shear? I don't believe so. I'm not even sure what the Elysium Shear is. Did Mist ever mention it or talk about her involvement in its theft? I don't think she would tell me something so important, especially if she's guilty. I've known her for some time, but I don't know if she's guilty. I mean, she still thinks she's guilty. What's your general impression of Mist? I'm not sure what you mean by general impression. No. Um, she has a tendency to change shapes, so I think that's a little bit different from what you're asking. Um, She's flighty. Oh, I'm not sorry. You've uh, worked with her for up to a year now. Just kind of a general thought on her character. 
point of this thing, the thing she's trustworthy for the most part. She has a tendency to take things that might not be hers or things come into her possession. She's not willing necessarily to give it to who it belongs to, in my personal experience with it. Um, but I don't think she's the reason a lot of bad things have happened. She just seems to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, Fulman, just so you were actually, you're not, you have, you're kind of aware of the Elysian Shear, but like, as far as you know, yeah. Your party had nothing to do with any of that. We usually don't. So you said. Um, I would say for the seven four three one, you the uh, the accusation is from somebody named Sithark, is the one who who's accusing is a actually accuses the party of conspiring with him to steal the Elysium Shear. And uh, the original complaint was from a uh, at a freedy by the name of Sandy. But we will cut cut back, I guess, to being missed as they're about to go over that part. Okay. Um, so after coming out of the cocoon and taking care of the fetal pig. Um, Making some jerky. Yep, I gave the chain, which Toby now was not in, to Full Moon. Um, his deity wanted it, which is why we were a little in a little bit of conflict. Um, and let's see, we needed to go to the city of Brass because that's where we found out Lioness was. Sandeep actually had her stuck in a golden statue. Um, and Sandeep was throwing this kind of party to show off all of his, well, I guess conquests would be the right way to put it. And that's where uh, things got kind of odd really fast. Molly, my, my captain, was there. So was Arena, supposedly. And Sithark and Arissa were there. That's the first time we ever met them. And Catherine, Lioness's daughter, who was much older than uh, she was last time we saw her, was there as well, trying to get her mother back. Um... Sandeep decided to go ahead and initiate a chase or competition. Anyhow, that's that's during the time frame Rendell got his book back, and Sandeep wanted everyone to try to reach the top of his palace home to get this orby thing, which well the hobgoblins have now, but. Um, during that time frame, I grabbed the statue of a winged nightmare and used some magic to free the creature inside. I was actually hoping that by freeing this creature, which was the friend of Sith Ark and Arissa, that they would maybe assist team up and then we could finish the competition. That did not happen. They uh, just kind of went their own way. Okay. Yes, who was this? Sithark and Orissa. Oh. Um, Nightwind was the creature I freed. Nightwind was nice, at least, but, I mean, Sithark was a, kind of a dick. <clears throat> Which is kind of fun to say, because he was... Um, anyhow, Sithark ran off with Orissa. Marlo went, like, full monk up the stairs. Uh, Sithark grabbed... I believe the Elysium Shear at that time frame, and Arissa started transforming into this giant snake lady, almost turning us all to stone. And Marlo won the competition. And Catherine was able to free Lioness. That's mainly what I was doing. I was protecting Catherine while she was doing some weird spell thingy. Uh, any questions about that? You guys get up to quite a lot. It has been a really busy, chaotic year. Wow, this was all in a year. Yeah. 
one technically less than a year. They were they they're, no, they're yeah, like a couple of weeks. <laughs> this is all that hurt part. Yeah. Wow. Well. No wonder Rindle had such interesting stories for me when we chatted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What ended up happening with Sithark and Orissa then? Sithark actually calmed Orissa down so that she would go back into her normal form and then they disappeared. They ran off into the city of brass and I with the Elysium Shear and I don't know what happened to them after that until I ran back into them in capital. Um yeah, Sithark was on a quest to hunt down Miserathus, and that that just recently happened. I don't know exactly how that ended, but it was not going well. Orissa had gotten into her huge snake lady form again, going against this Mercury dragon, and we, we, we ran. It seemed like the right idea at the time. And this was just the other day? Or was that earlier today? That that was kind of earlier today, actually. It was earlier today. It was literally in game t- in terms two hours ago. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Okay. Uh, hmm. So you never laid a hand on the Elysian Seer. I did not, and as far as I know, no one in my party did either. Okay. What was this god, ancient god of slaughter that you supposedly helped release? So, well, um, in attempts to deal with Nicole Balas, a big purple dragon that was coming for Primus, who I think is the god in question, we... What the ancient gods of slaughter do you deal with on a day-to-day basis? Hopefully just that one. Uh, for you, you're actually... So, technically, they deal with... Because you would know this. Yeah. Four. (laughs) Yeah, we do. I feel... Yeah, she would be just really amused by all of this. Okay. Continue about... Okay, so... Purple Dragon. Uh, Nicole Balas was coming for Primus because apparently he wants to become a god. And we were trying to get Primus to, well, my plan was to either find a way to destroy Primus or use it to lure Nicole Balas to a better location to actually fight him. Um, You thought you would be able to defeat him if you just lured him elsewhere. Did you have a plan to fight him? Yes, I was hoping to get him somewhere by the coastline. The Dreamer had agreed to assist me. We were going to need to wear Nicole Blast down enough for the Dreamer to be able to... Finish him up. Uh, grapple him and start enjoying all the delicious Nicole Blast dreams. Ah. Uh, however, that obviously it didn't happen. Instead, Melee grabbed Primus and Primus took over her and apparently started blending with the Abyssal Shear. Neely had the Abyssal Shear when she got Primus. Yes. And... You guys do have the best luck. Yes, yes. The best horrible luck in the world. Anyhow, uh, Melee then disappeared and went and attacked the Dreamer, finishing waking him up and slaughtering a whole bunch of Cicalia, and then opened a rift into the abyss and left. Which then would have freed Primus from her prison on, its prison on Suabos. Uh, so, Marlo, no, you, this is, well, we are going to actually do a slash cut to basically the trial. This is, they will be asking to miss all this stuff at the trial as well. So, yeah, um, We'll, we'll, we'll end there with this interview, and we'll just switch to the trial. And then the uh, the judge stands up. Uh, he is wearing uh, like a an emblem of a of a set of scales with a skeletal hand holding them up. Um, he is wearing almost all black armor. You can see a recognizable greatsword attached to his hip that he presents as evidence. Like he presented it on the dais as the Ele- the Elysian Shear that a creature known as Sithark returned um, because he was directed 
at the behest of Mist in exchange for the freeing of his creature of his um, creature Nightwind, who um, that he was supposed to steal this thing, but he never was able to find Mist again. Wanted to make sure that the record was set straight. Um, but that's that would have been during the uh, charges. But then he turns to, now, is there anything anyone else would like to add or clarify? And he says this to all of you, actually. Oh, is the dreamer in the big tank now? Uh, there is a cuttlefish in a bowl that... Oh, what? <laughs> okay. Love it. <clears throat> so... He was asking if anyone else wants to add things? Yep. I never asked Sithark to ever get that sword. We were never in alliance. I freed Nightwind in hopes that Sithark and Arissa would assist me in dealing with Sandeep's challenge. Uh, instead, they chose to go off on their own. We have three members, uh, illustrious members of this court that have submitted themselves to a uh, to a zone of truth all are testifying that you specifically directed him to steal that sword well i will submit to a zone of truth and i will specifically say i never asked sithark to get that sword and i was never in alliance with sithark <clears throat> you you are immune to this to the spell, so therefore, how can we? You're you're immune to charm, right? Yeah, but zone of truth is not a charm spell. This is. Oh, okay. Well, then I am going to have to request my companions to step in on my behalf, uh, since you will not trust my testimony. I mean, do you take testimony from the peanut gallery? Yes, please. We have waited for your testimony, Master Mavacius. Oh, Master Mavacius. You know, I always thought that that would be like horrible when I heard that, but it's not so bad. I could get used to it. So, I just know that we all had to battle Sith Ark. And, and his um, Medusa friend. It even turned a couple of us into stone. I, the idea that there could have been some alliance seems very, very strange to me. Sithark is a known mercenary. He could have easily have been under contract. I have his testimony recorded, and he actually indicates to one of the Modrons to, like, play it like Star Wars style hologram and you see exactly that like he, now uh, I would say anyone with a with a perception has a perception higher than 15 it notices a ring on his finger shaped like a brain like the top of it shaped like a brain hey isn't that ring hey Thaven Thaven that ring on Sithark um, the, the brainy one do you know what that is? I'm pretty sure that's magical. And David, you would know it's a ring of mind shielding. It's Not only does shield. it make it impossible for, it also breaks all zone, uh, truth telling spells that they think they're they're telling the truth. Uh, the person that cast them on will think they're telling the truth, even though they're not. How was he not checked for that before he gave testimony? It's rather obvious. I, I administered the testimony myself. I do not understand what you were speaking of. That ring on his finger, the one right there. If there's a way to pause it and like enhance, zoom in, highlight. Enhance. Yeah, enhance, enhance. <laughs> um, at which point he, uh, Calumvor actually kind of stops and like. Are you calling me a liar? No. no, she's calling you an idiot. I wouldn't have said idiot, but maybe not quite so perceptive. I, I do need to be clear. Is this this is Fee saying this, not 
Yeah, no, yeah. Dahlia is de- a totally separate but more brutal peanut gallery further back, but very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she can't handle this. She's sitting in the back. She's just happy to learn what the hell's been going on. So from what I understand, you are requesting a stay as we find a, a to ask for a different judge. Seems about right. Very well. I would also like to re-record his testimony as well as the other three members of, you said, his court or the court that agreed with him because if a little item like that is slipping through the cracks, then this entire case is irrelevant. Yeah, do you have video of that? Of the others? No. Yes. Mm. I mean, somehow they're getting through your zone of truth too. Um, at which point he's, he actually, he's, he's actually looking pretty nervous and then kind of says, fine, I accept your change of venue or change of judicial, um, oversee oversight. We will reschedule for the next earliest time for your hearing. That will be, and he starts looking through calendar, 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 calendar. calendar. We can have another bail hearing in 500 years. Until then, you will be kept in holding. We will not be kept in holding. Well, my clients will not be kept in holding. And well, furthermore, we will not have trial, right? Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. on trial. She will not be kept in holding for 500 years. And on top of that, you will resubmit all witness statements as they are null and void. We cannot get Sithar his. Uh, soul is currently being claimed by another being. Then his testimony can't bear part in this case. Orissa, the creature known as Orissa, is currently in indefinite, um, is in an in, in indefinite status. Consequences of her own actions. And the creature known as Nightwind is not responding to summon. Sounds like a dismissal then. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Uh, What's my persuasion with this character? Plus 16. Plus 16. Mm-hmm. I am a ruler of the fourth layer of the Nine Hells. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have her Wikipedia page up. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm rolling for her, so it's probably not going to go well. You said plus 16. With advantage, because you're making a very compelling argument. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, uh, the So the judge looks like he wants to lock mist up but at the same time you, you start hearing like the uh, inevitables that are around the court kind of murmuring and he's like fine 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 she is remitted to her, her own cognizance she must be returned uh, must return back to this court in 500 years when we find a new judge um mr Spierna? yes do we actually need a and mist is whispering this do we need a new judge or do we just need that charge thrown out of the case everything we can get okay and as i said you guys because that's what you came for the elysian shear is literally on the desk right now in front of the judge Mm -hmm. well so what you guys want to do Fiona's your... shuffling her papers happily. Mm-hmm. You were hand- the uh, cuttlefish bounce out, but a small little moat is left that you can grab, and that is Rindle's soul. Or fee can. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to just put it. Yeah, Shana's playing Fiona. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm Sorry. Totally That's confused. Why... Sorry, came in late. That's okay. That's why the horns, and I ran to find an extremely wrinkled shirt. <laughs> okay. Um, I hold my hands up to get the manacles they just, off. Like, they actually disappear too, like they become dust. Okay. Um, will I be receiving a specific notice when the hearing is? We or... will send one of our agents, at which point one of the inevitables kind of stands up and actually disappears itself. She's already been dispatched 500 years from this point. Excellent, thank you. Um, what does the judge look like? Um, he yeah, is. How is he dressed? Like, he, what kind of creature is he? So he's a human. He looks human. Very dark skinned. Um, 
uh, kind of dark brown hair. Uh, as I said, he has that symbol of uh, of scales with a skeletal arm. Um, he also uh, around his like arms is a weird tattoo of like a panther. Um, and uh, his eyes also have almost like a cat-like quality. Well, uh, if you would like to make a one of the knowledge checks, I will let you do so. If you want to identify him. Which would that be? It would be religion for this guy. Ah. <laughs> I am not useful yet. Nope, that, that is not right. You definitely <laughs> do not have 120. <laughs> Ten. How do you know? Uh, he seems to, he has some deity-like qualities, but he's not a deity of your world, so you're not sure. Okay. Um, he does slightly remind you of, like, the Raven Queen, but, like, same type of death god, but not. Okay. Um, will the Elysium... I'm sorry, Magister, ma Judge Personage? You may call me Magister Kellenvor. Magister Ellenvor. Kellenvor. Um, sorry, Kellenvor. Kellenvor. Like, you were okay. literally having this argument. Kellenvor. Okay, sweetie, I'm actually still having trouble <laughs> uh -huh. hearing. Yeah, I know, so. I know, I know, but okay. it's funny, so we'll go with it. All right, fine, fine. Um, anyhow, I do not know if... Primus and the Abyssal Shear, how their relationship with the Elysium Shear would. During the next 500 years, is the Elysium Shear going to be somewhere where they I can't... will maintain custody of it for the next 500 years. Okay. Sounds good. Shouldn't it be with a neutral third party? At every point, or, there's a rather, in this place, fourth party, since you're being removed from this case. You are overstepping your bound bounds, Council. Hmm. Like I thought your payment has received. It is, but I can't say I'm not interested. And who would you suggest, Council? I can hold on to it for you. I'm kidding, no, no. That is not <laughs> going to happen. I know, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um... Damn it, I don't actually know this universe well enough to know any creatures that aren't in some way related to this, because even if I said, like, the Dreamer, he's a material witness in the case, so... It you could, sense. so you would, I'll say Fee would uh, basically want it held by somebody uh, of a lawful bent, um, mm -hmm. uh, probably one of the other Dukes of Hell, so, like, you could choose Asmodeus, Mephistopheles, or Dis, probably, would be the ones that you would be most comfortable with. Let's go with or Asmodeus, because he is my he is my ruler, so he already knows me. Asmodeus or... does have standing. <sighs> I will go talk to him. At which point the judge just Why just not just leave it with the more drones? That's what they're here for, right? He's already gone. <laughs> the sword is still sitting there though. Like he didn't disappear with the sword. I'm going to conveniently step aside and make some kind of demonic phone call to Asmodeus's daughter, who is my buddy. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Glacia. Yeah. So I'm conveniently just not here at the moment. I'm going to step aside. I'm going to look at my friends and say, we got seven days to save Millie, and I'm going to run up and grab the sword. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, uh... And then Shane, get me the fuck out of here. Okay. So you dimension door the fuck out? <laughs> yep. Okay. Deuces. Sweet. We, we, we'll deal with that in just a second. Uh, what do you guys all want to do? Timmins is going to go over to Dahlia and Davin and pick up Frost. It's like, let's, I'm Dahlia now. let's get out of here and um, find somewhere let's where I can out. take a bit of a rest so I can plane shift us home. Okay, that's great. There's Barlow just dimension doored out and like literally stole something right in front of everybody everybody on the plane of law so i need initiative checks while i 
18 for miss. There's never a no dull moment. Ever. Oh, I don't have that open. Sorry, hold on. Can kick on my name if it's not there. 10 for full one. Oh, everything's all messed up. I wasn't sure I'd actually need her stuff today, so I'm sorry I didn't have it open. It's okay. Let's see. Huh? There we go. I will say, Marlo, um, and I'll go through all your guys' initiatives in just a second. Marlo, uh, as soon as you grab the sword, you're not tuned to it yet, so you can't quite use these powers. But I will say that you're aware that this probably does a similar, like, gate spell as the Abyssal Shear did, only not to the Abyss. It'd be to heaven, basically. Um, so, be aware on that. Um, it also is... Instead of saying, like, feed me, it is saying, it, it's this almost sing-songy voice in your head of, like, who are you? Why are we running? Uh, but let's see what we got. <laughs> Echo, what was your... Oh, 18. Okay. Yep, 18. Wow, you guys actually all rolled pretty well. Yeah, and uh, the rapier at my side is a weapon of warning, so anybody within 30 feet from okay. me can't be surprised. And okay. I have an advantage on initiative checks. Sweet. Nice. I was also saying Dahlia's thing kicks in where she basically can't get... Less than twenty, I think, on this. Oh wait, no, this is an issue. Never mind. Ignore me. Shut up. Okay. Never mind. So let's see. Uh, it would be, uh, it would be Remy, Remy, first. What? What's going on? Who's where? Remy was like putting together things she was bored at the trial so she was just like so i need to know what the hell's going okay, on okay so marlo like seen an opportunity took it grabbed the sword and then dimension doored out you don't know where he went but suddenly all the other like robots around just like start activating and yeah, they look like they're about to move you don't know what they're gonna do though <sighs> well I'm going to hold my action with my rifle for the first aggressive action. That's like actually like sh shooting at us or doing something. I don't know what's going on, so I don't want to just shoot at somebody in the, you know, the plane of law. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> not talk our way out of it. Knox looks around very confused. Um and uh he actually will go ahead and dimension door out as well. Um, Traitor. <laughs> uh, and now it's Marlo's turn. Okay. Um, Who are you? What, what do you want? Well, um, I guess right now I kind of wanted you. Um, we got a problem. And maybe you can help us. What is the problem? I am nothing but helpful. Well, um, your twin, I guess, if we can say that, um, is in possession of a friend of ours, maybe controlling her. But they're also in possession of Primus, the God of War. So that seems out, very that's, bad. That's not, yeah, that, that's a bit of an understatement. Hmm. 
And what would you like me to do about it? I, are you, I'm assuming you're just keep on running, right? Like you're you're having this conversation. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and actually, I will. There are more drones, right? Yeah, they're like and the majority you, of the people towards the end. Yeah, yeah, they're like but, starting. They're, they're, you're actually starting to hear some alarms blare, and you're like, Modrons are beginning to like filter out to the streets. They okay. they don't seem to be like aggressive, but they seem to be trying. They look like they're going to be moving to try to kind of like corral you in. Okay. Um, I am totally going to um, disguise self. Not really to turn into anything specific. I'm just going to like polygon myself, <laughs> like, like a bad, like not a bad, but like like think like a video game from like 15 years ago. I, I, right now, I'm thinking of Money for Nothing. Like that's yeah. Okay, maybe a little bit better than that. Okay. Everything's like just vague angles. Man. Okay, lawn mode. Okay, I gotcha. But yeah, I'm just angled marlo now okay and yeah i'm i'm running okay uh Are you more the first now that you're more angular I'm probably worse no so well it's an illusion so yeah i'm not uh, boo fair is anyone else not seeing anything in the turn order thing Where i'm not, not either okay i figured we weren't using it okay yeah, i did roll into it uh okay well i've copied all your guys so that i can keep track of it but um so the uh it would actually be the first um inevitable's turn and it doesn't have any kind of teleportation ability in plane so it will just it'll kind of like it'll just start running it's quick for what it is but i it, pretty sure marlo's faster than this thing it is faster than most of you guys um uh Rainy, you were holding your action until one of them does that. It, its eyes go red. It looks like it's sending up an alarm as well. In fact, every like light turns red in the the courtroom, and it looks like the entire like city block you're on. Everything is now a flashing alarm. Question: Is it running after Marlo or is it attacking us? Running after Marlo. Okay. You guys technically haven't broken a law yet. Yeah, so I'm just standing there. I, I, I'm not going to do anything. Right, right. <laughs> it's like that. Even we yeah, didn't break just, any laws. Yeah, just like we're done with me. Working. Wasn't me. I don't know these people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, we're all free to go. Technically, we could just leave now. So this thing, by the way, is like is like ten feet tall, and it is just running out towards Marlo. But you're, as I say, you're pretty sure Marlo can be quicker than this thing. Uh, that would be missed. All right, so I'm leaving the courthouse. I don't actually know where Marlo went, so I'm going to go in the direction that the inevitable is going. And as I'm going, um, running basically with Frost, I'm going to say my hearing in 500 years is going to go so poorly. Nonsense. <laughs> You'll have me. Yeah, but what is she going to ask for her services that time? Mm, that's a good point. You have to make sure, you know, Rindle's soul is with somebody else again. Oh, no. <laughs> At that point, she's just going to get fed up of having to barter for him. It's like, I put so much energy into that man. Uh, and that brings us to Dahlia. Just taking Miss Lee, just sauntering out of the court. Yeah, just, I mean, unless something catches my eye. Uh, yeah, just following, just following like, Miss Lee. In terms of, like, things you could steal? I mean, like, I'm trying to help save the world, so my perspective on law is a little skewed at the moment. <laughs> oh, um, I just played a lawyer, so I'm just looking for loopholes. Well, there's also, so there are evidence bags. Most of them don't look like they're worth anything. One looks like a ruined book, like it had been dunked in a river of horribleness for years on years. Um, yeah. the, uh, no, I'm not saving. And then... Uh, there's, it looks like a desiccated beetle pig, and, uh... I thought that got turned into jerky. It, it did, but, like... <laughs> it's... I don't want to know how it got back together. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Um, Marlo still has the bag of holding, correct? Yeah. Oh, I do? 
Yeah, I missed handed it to you when she went into handcuffs because she didn't know if you were going to need it. Oh, great. So, yep. So all of all of Miss stuff and um, like you've got both of it. Yeah, because you handed the bag to Marlo and Frost to me. Yep. Oh, yeah. So just yeah. as a heads up, you've got everything <laughs> that's in the bag. That's okay. Marlo totally would have forgot. This makes it even better. Right. Okay, they even worse. So better. Yeah. Running after mist? There's not really running, they're kind of sauntering out. Um, sauntering after mist? Or yeah. catching up and being like, so what's the plan? Uh, we're gonna find somewhere where I can rest, regain my spells. Hopefully Marlo will be able to find us, and then we can plane shift home. Okay. Um, unless you were doing something else, the two inevitables that are next in line in the initiative order, both of them, Dimension Door, out. One yeah. is goes the wrong way. The other one is um, now, Marlo, you actually look behind. It is probably 60 feet behind you, and it's leveling what looks like a Mega Man buster arm, essentially, at you. Uh, um, full moon. I'm just full on mist. I'm talking to Delia. It's like, don't worry, this doesn't happen all the time. Um, this is just something that could happen. I'm just trying to reassure uh, Saving as well. Uh, we don't usually do this. Um, being with them, this is the first time this happened. Um, I'm hoping it's the last, and uh, unless you guys are going to be around in 500 years, it's something that you guys won't have to worry about. My life expectancy but, isn't nearly that long, so once in a lifetime is fine for me. Uh, that brings us back to Raimi. If everybody's leaving, she's just like, okay, saunters on out. <laughs> <laughs> Following everybody else. Uh, it's now Nox's turn. Nox is Dimension Doored. Um, which is not quite as good at these inevitables of figuring out where you went. So I'm going to... Can somebody roll a D8 for me? Three. Okay, yeah. It, uh, Nox Dimension Doored the wrong way. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> is he still a little hungover? Yeah, I mean, he was... He, he's still probably actually drunk. Like, it's not... <laughs> Don't drink in Dimension Door, guys. We just keep on giving him alcohol. We're just enabling him at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's funny. And then Marlo... We, like, we uh, like you so much better when you're drunk. Uh, Marlo, you hear in your head, would you like to get out of this situation? I can... I can take us somewhere really nice. Because it's now your turn, Marlo. That sounds like a come on. <laughs> well, I would love to, but I got friends and they got to come too. Um, but hold that thought. <laughs> Maybe we can get back to there. And then I'm going to talk to Shane and be like, hey, that thing you do that's really kind of annoying that sometimes I'm there and sometimes I'm not there and like I can walk through walls. Why don't you do that? Okay. Uh, and you blink out. Okay, and I'm still running. But now, if I when I when I blink out, I'm gonna like try to go through walls. <laughs> okay. Um. The first blink is automatic, I think, right? And then each turn. Uh, out. No, I don't think there is. I don't think there's an automatic one. I think it's always a roll. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go, so go ahead and roll your d20. Okay. Yeah, you blink out. Um, and that brings us to the first inevitable who is clunking along, um, and then stops as soon as you blink out and like its head goes like 360 and is just scanning. And then it, and then it goes ethereal. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh yes. And then you hear detected. You hear detected. The rest of you don't hear is shit because you can't see her on the. But like, like, yeah. yeah. Okay, missed. Um. Yeah, I'm heading back towards Knox's uh precinct because I think that would make sense, and maybe Marlo would know that 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 would be where we would head. That's where I'm headed. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
I have no idea how to track Marlo down here, so that's where Mist is headed. I mean, yeah, Dolly is kind of just imprinted duckling following Mist wherever, because she doesn't know how to do any of this magic dimension shit. Okay. That brings us to Thaven, who probably is the one who most likely has some of this magic dimension shit. Yeah, I'll elbow him. Like, hey, do you have any ideas? Uh, dimension door, possibly? <laughs> I don't hey. know where Marlo is. Mist, so... would you know? No one would know. He's currently on the ethereal plane. No. Nope. No clue. Well, out of here would be a really cool start, so let's just do that part first. <laughs> Can we get the all of us out of here? Not with Dimension Door. Girl, damn it. And to be clear, we didn't get to keep the manacles. Correct. Which is unfortunate. Cause... Yeah, no, I don't think we have a good way to find Marlo right now. I don't have locate person prepared. I was going to say, well, let's find a place that's at least off this planet first. Different place. <laughs> so we're as far away from like all this. That. I, I have to rest before I can cast that again. And I really don't want to leave Marlo behind. So let's head to the precinct. That's probably where Marlo will head once he loses his tail. And uh, go from there. Okay. Um... So are you, you just head into the precinct then, Taven? No spells, nothing? No. There's okay. nothing I can think of. We're not being chased. Don't know how to find Marlo. I have no divination-related spells. Okay. Uh, it's now the two Nebulas turn. There's one that's actually a, the same area that Nox went to and is... Like they're having a conversation, essentially. Um, the one with the buster arm doesn't have the ethereal spell um, equipped, so is going to shoot where it thinks Marlow is. It doesn't matter, but like this weird fiery gnat just shot out and just lands uselessly on the ground, and then it like sucked back up into the arm. It's pretty cool. Um, and then. Uh, then that would be full moon. So he's going to take the time to start writing things down and making a map. So just in case something happens again, we might have a little map for later. Also, under his breath, you can hear him say, this is why we need to have somebody that can scry. <laughs> I can't scry. I just need 10 minutes to do it. So you can't do it? Not immediately, no. I can block the... scrying. <laughs> when we get to the precinct, I can start. Okay. Uh, Raimi. I'm going to send up my Al Familiar and just have it go in the direction where I think okay. he might have gone to see if I could figure out where he's going. Okay, does it have any ability to see into the ethereal plane? No, but I'm just, I mean, I'm going to see the the one that just stand around, the, you know, yeah. shooting nets at everything. And actually, so I would actually see Marlo, you could actually see this. It is actually tracking you, but it just can't shoot you while it's um, it, it seems to be able to see you. It just can't. It doesn't seem to be able to touch you. Um, and that brings us to Knox, who's having a conversation. And then Marlo, uh, you come back to the material plane. Mealy, you are right. Raimi, sorry. Raimi, you know where Marlo is for the next like two seconds. I tell them, I'm like, he's over. And I say, yeah. And then when he's done, I'm like, done. <laughs> You're muted, Tucker. Tucker, you're muted. So I know I can't see it right this second, but mm -hmm. I could have saw it right before I blinked back into the material plane. How far am I from the one that's ethereal? Uh, I would, are they gaining on me or not? So that one's really slow. So that one's like 200 feet from you. But it seems... So you're kind of seeing how these things work. They seem to be like... You have a gunner, the one, the one that's shooting nets at. And mm -hmm. that one seems to like... 
teleport somewhere and set himself up as a turret and, and move. The one that's in the ethereal plane is uh, lighter and seems to be more of a like spotter. You don't the one that you the third one you don't know quite what it is. Although that was the biggest one. Okay. The other question is: Am I indoors? Uh, I would say because you said you blinked to run through walls. So if you want to be indoors, you can be indoors. Well, no, I'm just asking. I don't know how far I got when I blinked back in. Um, uh, I mean, you're on a street, so you could easily be indoors. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm running towards the exit. Okay. On the other side. Um. Hey Shane, this is really fun. Um, you think you could do the other thing too? You know, the one where I get to like <laughs> teleport myself over and over again. Uh. Is this a blast? <laughs> okay. Yeah. He fun? says that you'll have to concentrate on one of them. Well, he's not concentrating on anything. He's cast Dimension Door, which isn't concentration. Oh, Blink isn't concentration. Blink isn't concentration. Yeah, so he was like, you mean far step? Yep. Ah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'm going to start actually making my way back. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and roll the d20, please. The d20? Yeah, because we still have to check for blink. Oh, yeah, if I blink out. And yeah, I am, I'm using far step as my bonus action now to, like... Yeah, I got you. Just basically to peer in random spots so that maybe they have a hard time tracking me. Uh-huh. And you blink out again. Yeah, blink out again. Yeah, the one with the gun is still tracking you, and he's like, but like as soon as you blink, it looks confused. Turns around, sees sees where you teleported to. He's about to spin around, then you blink out again, and it's just you actually see like steam is starting to come out of its brain. <laughs> You're gonna make them explode. Good. If one explodes, I want whatever that dome piece is that has the cute little eyeball on it. All right. The uh. Um, the one that's ethereal with you, it was like running full steam, you, and then you teleported and it like tries to skid to a halt and I'm going to actually make it roll a check. <laughs> uh, it managed to, to stay up. It almost rolled a nat one, at which point it was going to have some issues, but there's a lot of mass being moved around. Um, uh, and that was the one on the ethereal plane. So that brings us to mist. Um, okay. you can, you, you definitely, well, no, because I was in the theory plane, you wouldn't have heard that. Um, you definitely hear some steam escaping down the road as you guys are in there. Um, I'm going to thank Raimi and start heading in the direction that she indicated Marlo was at. Okay. Like, running that way. You're okay. <clears throat> you see the, the one with the gun, like, steam is starting to escape its head, um, and that brings us to Dahlia. Still following Miss Like a Duckling? She's, I mean, unless we never actually went over that celestial sword thing, but I'm assuming it doesn't do anything cool like cut open a rift that we can all jump through. So, yeah. <laughs> Just following. Haven. Uh, I'm going to cast Fly on myself and just kind of get a bit of altitude and follow Mist. Okay. You, you have a top down view of this scene. By the way, there's like a wave of Modrons is beginning to form too. Like it is, they're like getting stacked on top of each other and are like forming a barricade. <laughs> That's not good. Can I see Marlo? I would say most of these are like cubes too. They're the cube Modrons, so it actually makes a pretty good barricade. It's like creating a brick wall out of these things. Uh, you probably see Marlo for, so you, you, because everything's kind of happened concurrently, you would have seen him run, or you would have seen him come back up, run, teleport, like, from your area of view, you might have seen a glimpse of his, like, coat, and then he blinks out again. 
And you and the steam, obviously. All right. It is now the Modron's turn. Who the Modron is, or not Modron? It, the uh, Inevitable's turn. The the big the uh, big guy is still talking to Knox. Um, and then the one with the gun is actually going to hold its action for when Marlo reappears. Uh, and that brings us to full moon. So as I know she's running my call, uh, sorry, my quality of art gets worse. So I'm going to mumbling something under my breath, but I'm going to try to keep pace. Uh, go through different things and try to figure out if there's anything else that we noticed if we're being followed possibly because we just started running um no one is following you but you were definitely noticing this wave of modrons and another wall is beginning to fill up that seems to be designed to also cut you guys off from joining whatever is going on so i was trying to figure out that we were trying to go in the uh, direction of the precinct and yeah, to... and then Mist kind of button hooked. If you're going to continue on the precinct, uh, that way is perfectly clear. In fact, the streets are like dead of of anything. So then I guess I will try to follow her, and then I do as usual. Nobody tells me anything. <laughs> keep going. Ramy, button hooking, or are you going to go on the original plan and go into the station? I'm going to follow Mist. I'm going to just unfurl my wings and I'm going to fly. So this is... I, I want to illustrate this scene as much as I can right now. There's two Modrons, one which in are inevitables, one of which is in the ethereal plane. The other one is trying to Mega Man Marlowe. A wall of cubes and polyhedral creatures is being formed around it in kind of an arena. And is Mist has this trail of people behind her as they are like walking around trying to figure out something to do. I just want to be clear, Knox is still talking to uh, to the inevitable. Uh, and that brings us to Marlo. Marlo, with far step and blink and everything going on, you think you can get to mist in the group. You just would have to leave Knox behind. But everybody else is together? Yeah. They're all, like, following Mist as, like, ants. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think he knows that Nox isn't with us. I think if he sees Mist slash group, he's going to think we're all together. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, no, I... Yeah, if I don't see Nox there and I see Mist, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going towards Mist. Or anyone. Anyone I see. Okay. So Although you appear right in front of Mist, and then at which point you hear, Do you want me to open the portal now? Uh, just a second. I need everyone together. I can't run forever, and then I'm going to keep on going. <laughs> Assemble into formation. <laughs> so you could just run back to us? We'll just be all in a group? Yeah. 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 I'm still going. I don't Shape stop, up. but I just... Oh, let me see if I blink out. And now we have to check if you blink. Did the inevitable do anything when Marlo initially appeared? Uh, oh, yeah, I do have to roll that attack. But with the far step, like, it doesn't actually matter because it's a net attack. Like, this is, they're inevitables. They're not the most creative fighters in the world. Yeah. Well, am I on the wrong side of the wall from the net guy? Actually, yeah, when wall? you appear, you've been on the wrong side of the wall anyway. So he does fire, but it grabs like a pack of Modrons. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to be like, hey, guys, you got to get close together. So I'm holding both the Sheer and um, Shane in one hand while I grab my mandolin and use it to cast fly on myself. Okay. <laughs> I have a really quick question. Before all this darting around slows down to a stop, what's your primary color? What's Marlo's? It, it doesn't happen to be blue. Um, actually, I just want to know it, if you're is it, blue. But he would. The cloak is blue. His his cloak of protection is kind of a sky blue color. Marlo's cosplaying Sonic. Gotta go find him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> his primary color is black and purple, but that cloak. Oh, is so blue. he's edgy. He's like. Sonic. Sonic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like with finger black fingerless gloves and stuff, I don't know. 
I, I just like the idea of him running around with like this arm full of equipment. He's <laughs> <laughs> just running around with all the zoop zoop. Gosh. Gotta go fast. Okay. Away from the inevitable. Yeah. So yeah, he's got all this crap. He's flying, and yeah, he goes on by because they're not all together. Okay. And I'm clustering as much as I can with everybody, so let's have a little hug circle. And he blinks out again. <laughs> Man, he teleports himself into the air, kind of. <laughs> like he's really trying to be tricky now. Yeah. So Miss kind of throws her hands up as Marlo does this. You know, okay, it, it, we're just gonna roll with it. Uh, full Moon, Raimi, Thaven, Knox, wherever you are. Huddle up, and she stops because running around right now is not going to be beneficial. She thinks. So. Oh, okay. Unless somebody wants to do something in initiative, I'm going to just move because the scene is ridiculous, and you figured out a way out of it. So, but um, Knox, at hearing this, will actually dimension door to you guys again. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, we better leave. That guy's really mad, and he's indicating the large inevitable. You think? At which point, that would be Marlo's turn again. He's gonna go ahead and plane shift. To... Oh yeah, yeah, that's the plan. Okay, so get to the group and let the sword do its thing. So you you fill a Wherever hole. In... Okay, so you actually open up a like basically gate into the air, and all of you through. Uh, and you, as you tumble out onto this immaculate field of grass. I do need to know everybody's alignment. I normally don't care, but it does matter here. Neutral, uh, kind of waffling between lawful and true neutral. Okay. Pretty sure I know Full Moon's not going to be welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> Ever increasingly chaotic good. Okay. <laughs> Ramey? That's chaotic neutral. Okay. Oh, yeah. neutral. Okay. Initially neutral good, but things are changing. So <laughs> I she's developing less and less regard for law <laughs> okay. as things as things move, let's just put it that way. But considering she's now also got good... this celestial sword, I don't know if that limits anything. I don't know. Uh I just it's Okay, so you guys kind of tumble out. You're in this immaculate field, like it's a courtyard. Um, there's a temple ahead of you, uh, built upon like a mountain. Um, it's raising up. The uh, as you look up, you see uh, winged creatures of various shapes and forms uh, viewing everything. Uh, as you kind of tumble out onto this field. Um, you see a bunch of people kind of sitting down, some of them strumming music. They seem like super peaceful. And uh, the sword in Marlo in your head it says, oh, Home sweet home. It's boring as hell here. Just, just FYI. <laughs> and Marlo, he looks at the grass and everything's nice. And it's really kind of rolling. He turns over and he sees the the winged creatures up in there and gets really scared. Yeah. Because we haven't had good luck with that. So. Yeah. Uh, so is everyone okay? Everyone? All right. Mind I'm if I have my bag looking. back, Marlo? Huh? Mind if I have my bag back? Oh, sh Yeah, it might be easier. Oh, shit. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Thanks. So that, that went totally according to plan. I'm going to take a nap. Okay. Um, around that time, actually, uh, two figures start walking towards you. No wings. Uh, they look like they're actually made out of marble. Um, and they have long halberds. Welcome to the celestial bureaucracy. To what do we owe this pleasure? It is rare to see living creatures here. Um... Marlo? They also, all of them have this, like, sun emblazoned, like a setting sun emblazoned on their chest. Marlo just kind of whispers to the sword. 
Oh man, I totally thought you were chaotic. <laughs> That's what my friend told me earlier. <laughs> I am. I am tied, however, to this plane. Well, hello. We seem to be to have been teleported to this plane by accident. Uh, a friend of ours acquired a new sword, and apparently they thought it'd play a trick on us. So if you're able to send us to our plane, we'd be happy to be out of your way. It, it, it actually, they actually, like, off their head at full moon. There's, totally so there's a weird flash of light, at which point, there's like, your presence is not welcome here. Send me home and I'll gladly leave. Very well. We can send you on your way. Um, he's about to plane shift full moon by himself. Yeah, that's why. Um, we would like to stay together as much as possible, if you I, wouldn't mind. Miskos, I'm pretty sure I don't want to go to full moon's home plane. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's a good somewhere point. else. Because Mist remembers full moon's not actually from Suabos. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't think Dolly would know that, actually. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because technically it won't plane shift him, it'll banish him, and it'll go back to his home plane. Catch up with you in a bit, Full Moon! Never mind, I guess. And you're gonna, you're just gonna Jesus. accept it, right, Full Moon? Or are you... Okay, so you get banished back to Stark, to the, basically the Underdark plane. Um, kind of actually at the feet of Char, weirdly, and who looks at you... What? what? What are you doing here, Full Moon? My lord, I seem to have been homesick, and I seem to be nice enough to bring me to you. you. Feel free to send me where you will. Uh. Yes, let's. I can't really have you here. There are machinations going on. I would appreciate a report, though. And then we'll go back to the, the, the basically the celestial bureaucracy. <laughs> now that they are, that is handled. What can we do for you? Some, most of you don't belong here. Uh, just need a little bit of a rest, and um, we'll be on our way. <clears throat> we can, we can offer you rest, please. Be aware, we cannot invite you in the city limits, or into the city. Your present, um, living beings tend to be a little too disruptive to our peace. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I can... Uh, We're never disruptive. <laughs> Ever. I don't know the meaning of the word. Would it be alright if we just camp here outside of the city limits for a few hours? Certainly. Um... If you don't mind me asking, how did you acquire that? And they're pointing to this, to this year. How did you acquire that? It has been lost for many, many years. Um, you were, are you returning it to us? Um, I... So here's it's the thing. thing. It's, it's really boring, boring here. So please, so. please let me stay with you. It's really boring. Is it? And it's only talking in my head. Yeah. It has chosen. It, it really doesn't want to. But yes. I mean, like, if you know something about it. Well, we just like to keep it away from its sibling. That's probably a good idea. But if you need of it, we, we understand. Sometimes... Things happen in the mortal pl plane that require a more hands-on approach than we can offer. Really? You're just going to understand? I don't have to, like... Like, I don't have to kill anybody or anything? Or Heavens no. Important, or? Why would you have to kill somebody for aid? That makes I, no I sense. Know. Right? <laughs> it makes no sense at all. That seems horrible. Aid must be freely given. That is the way of this realm. 
We do not believe in the quid pro quo as some of our some of the lesser deities do. Let me guess, one of you has to move like in the next couple of days or something, right? I mean, I'm willing to help. Do you have a pickup truck? Um, we'll pay you in pizza and beer. <laughs> <laughs> I knew immediately what you were going for. I'm like, thank God I'm muted. You can't. They did not actually say that. They're just confused. They don't know what pizza is. No, they know what pizza <laughs> is. They don't know what a truck is. Nor do they understand the like. Hippies. <laughs> We don't. I am. We're not asking for favors. Just let let the guiding light of the Sun Emperor um, light your path, and know that you go with our blessing. Oh, and also, your friend is very evil, and it might be um, it, it just FYI. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we try not to label people, but... It's rude. We're an inclusive group. <laughs> That's what... I, I understand. But what, how do you... Have, what, like, by very... Like... Like, on a scale of 1 to 10? Are we looking yeah. at, like, an 11 or a 22? Uh, on a scale of 1 to... If it was a scale of 1 to 10, how would any number be higher than 10? It makes so no he's sense. Not above. Okay, so not very evil, just like top of it. Uh, uh, under this scale, I we they actually look very. They're, they're, uh, maybe a seven. That's <laughs> eh, not that bad. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> Anyhow, still, if you would like to rest. Uh, you are safe here, although I will tell you, we, we've gotten a um, full transparency. There is a request from Mechanis to, um, for extradition. You might want to move on as soon as you can. Yeah. Yeah, we, we probably. They move fast. <laughs> I would never say that Mechanis moves fast, but uh, we are in a but efficiency is paramount there. So they, we will, you, they will be granted the extradition request in approximately twelve hours. Well, I only need eight. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so you guys take a full rest? Yep. Yeah. Um, full Moon, after you give your report to Char, whatever you tell her, um, she then, so where would you like to go, Full Moon? I can literally send you anywhere. Where do you feel you are needed? Actually, if you did you did you mention the melee thing? I would have definitely mentioned the melee thing. Okay, so Char actually is like, uh, so that's the disruption on the in Gehenna. Um, listen, normally I don't get involved in these whole like saving the universe things, but honestly, if the universe implodes, I kind of implode too. So maybe we should actually help out for once. Well, you can send me back to the plane that I was before. I'm sure they would go back to there eventually, and I can get some of your work done while I'm there. I can't send you back to um, the plane you came from. I don't have any pull there. Perhaps I can wait until your friends move on and then have you rejoin them. Or I can send you straight to the Abyss, but I don't think you would do well on your own. Your will is my command. 
All right, when they move on, I will make sure that you are magically there. I will bask in your glory until I leave. Bask away, full moon. Bask away. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we're <clears throat> taking a long rest. There isn't anything here that Mist would be interested in to attempt to make potions from, correct? Oh, sure. They're not going to let you pick any of it. All right. Mist won't get us into deeper trouble than we are now. But Yes, please piss off heaven. Yeah, yeah, that'll be great. Um, I will use my feet to make another healing potion while we rest, and then I will ask everyone, all right, so are we going after Melee or are we going back to Suabos? Well, I mean, we don't know where to go. She's in the abyss. How do we know that? Uh, the dreamer told me, showed me that after she killed a bunch of Cicalia, she opened a rift to the abyss. Well, I don't know if we want to fight him there. We, my idea was if somehow we can let Primus and her know that we've got this friend. I think she'll come to us. Maybe we can choose our our field. Okay. I, how do we let them know, though? You remember how weird the time dilation in the abyss is. Um. I don't know. We need a way to send a message to somebody. Probably anybody. It moves much faster there. They'll get. It'll get to her quick. Yeah, but I. I don't have anything that would send a message across the plains and i don't actually know of anyone except thrace that can and i'm only guessing thrace might be able to and i don't well actually i do know where i went but i'm not going to go there we could always just go back to suabos and find someone to send a message to nicole balas and tell him primus is in the abyss well, Thrace was going to talk to Nicole Balas about that. Hmm. I mean... So what are you guys going to do? <clears throat> now, here's the thing. If she's in the abyss, then that seven days just became like a couple of hours. Mm, yeah, I... We might actually already be out of time. We could head back to Suabo, so when I get there, I could try to reincarnate her. And at least then we'd be able to ask her if this was her plan all along. But full disclosure, she probably isn't going to come back as a dwarf, and she may not come back as female. I don't know. I mean, I think we should try. All right. We should do this. Okay, then um, let's head back to Suabos. As soon as we get ready to leave, I cast non-detection with your guys' permission on Mist, Marlowe, and the Elysium Shear. Okay. Um, uh, and that is the one other thing. Um, I would totally offer the shear to anyone who can probably use it. So Knox will take it. Okay. Yeah, that actually makes sense. Yeah. Um, at which point Knox, it, it, there's a weird flash of light. Um, some of, like, he's not happy, but the first of all, the shear code is just like. You are entirely too inebriated to wield me properly. And he like he instantly sobers. <laughs> oh. Um. But also, so he's he looks cherubic, I guess. Like he looks younger as soon as he holds it's the sword. Um. Looks like a depressed junkard. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, um, so actually, so Shaw was like, oh, they're, it, sound, it seems like they're about to leave the... I just lost them. Stand by, or hold on, and then like, I can't... Okay, got one of them. They're going to Suabos. And at which point, Full Moon, you feel that familiar tug of plane shifting, and then where are you guys going in Suabos? I believe we would be headed back to White River if I can target that to get to the ship. Okay. Yeah, you uh, you target your ship, we'll say. So all of you appear on the deck, and then like you hear a weird popping sound, and then ah, splash. <laughs> Man overboard. <laughs> Does the ship have one of those little donut ring things? Yeah, the little life ring. Mm-hmm. Well, let's look over and see who it is first, because we don't know. Yeah, full moon is in the water. Okay, we toss it. Full moon, your you, your your mistress decided to prank you just a little bit, but there's your quote unquote friends throwing you a life ring. <laughs> Why the quote unquote? Because I take it. Not happy, but I think it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where we'll call it for today. Um, you don't want to do the reincarnation of Melee real quick, because Chris has the option of saying no. Melee. Yeah, actually, we'll we'll back. go ahead and go with that. Uh, is, does Melee want to be reincarnated, or is Melee like good being dead and with oh, her goddess? Oh yeah, she's very dead. Is she dead? Yeah, she's dead. Uh, she'll be reincarnated. Okay. Awesome. Okay, go ahead and roll on the reincarnation chart. During the uh, spell, Mist would let Melee know that it's entirely like the information that you're probably not going to be same form as when you come when you come back. Oh. Actually, I actually need. Well, well, Actually, sorry. Um, I, I just realized something. Um, Neely, I need you. I need you. So the spell wouldn't work. Why? Because of where her soul is at. What? Where is her soul? At the forge. Her soul is still stuck in the abyss. Why would her soul be stuck in the abyss? Because if she would have died next to one of the soul crystals. Okay. Um, if the target soul isn't free or willing to do so, the spell fails. Yeah. Mm, too bad. Oh, well. You do feel like you, if you could free her soul somehow, and you do feel that she is dead. Like, you actually kind of get that, that pulse that, that's out there, but it's chained somewhere all right so i will share with the party then that uh melee is dead but her soul is trapped currently and considering that she's in the abyss and we saw those crystally things before maybe in one of those crystals but so we know for a fact that whatever's running around in her body isn't her uh i think that this like cast off her body at this point. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I don't know even long... know where the Abyssal Shear or Primus is. Yeah, I don't know how long that lasted. I know you said something about the body would run out as in it seven were. days, but because seven of days. because of how the Abyss works, that seven days was up yeah. in about five, it was about uh, up in That's like 15 minutes, so. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, just double checking. So, yeah. If we want to save Melee, we are going to have to go back to the Abyss. Let's do it. Hey, I'm game. I've got nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? All right. So you might find some cool books or statues. The... In, in lieu of that, I'm go <laughs> maybe we'll artifacts. go up with Avon and be like, with sparkles in her eyes, she's like, are you a wizard? 
<laughs> I'm not just any wizard. I'm an abjurer. Oh, th I could totally <laughs> use your help on some projects. And if I think properly from when you were in the dungeon, I think you want something that was there, but you kind of left. Why? I would love to help you with projects, and there are stuff in the dungeons I'd like. Let me find my colleague. Searches through bags, brings out the talking skull. I will t pull out like this, like, it's folded up, but it's like this black silk type cloth, and I'll undo it, and it's a portable hole, and inside it is the mithril golem. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. And how long, do you, Scott, would it take for me to like repair this? For you to repair it with the the with what's going on, I would say you can repair it within, I would say two weeks. And I just say that as you know, you're the one who estimate. built it in the first place, so yeah. As an estimate, I'm like I could probably repair it in about a couple weeks. Oh, well, let's get started then. <laughs> <laughs> you look starstruck. Yeah, it's like, yeah. So immediately, any downtime. Okay. Um, since we are back on the ship, how was Nib's project going? And oh yeah. So at this point, Nibs? on the on the bow of your ship is this beautiful six-barreled gun. Yes. With a crank on the side of it, and there's like a belt of that cartridge ammunition just like splayed out everywhere. I love it. <clears throat> I go. I go and hug Betty. Uh, Ramy, I'll yep. track down Nibs. I would love to introduce Nibs you. is passed out. He looks like he's <laughs> been just working twenty four seven. And the gun's right there. Yeah. I'll start looking at it and I'll start examining it. Okay. You think if you like the gun is perfect? You think you could probably get some uh, if with a little bit of. Tinkering, you could probably make the ammo better. Yeah, and I like I think I could help with the ammo, make it a little, make it a little bit better, more efficient. Well, once Nibs is woken up, we'll introduce you to. I'm sure you're going to have a lot to talk about. So many things to do. Yes. Everybody has a project. And none of you have time for it. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah. No fun. There'll be downtime later, I'm sure. Oh yeah, once we, you know, save the world. No biggie. Defeat some evil god. There was a four of them. Yeah, I, I said mind. four gods of destruction, yeah. not four true, evil gods. True. There were there were four gods of destruction and slaughter. Yeah. 